Well, what about feelings? To change, you have to act contrary to your feelings. You have to do what you don't want to do in order to make in order to get to the place where you can feel what you ultimately want to feel. You can't get happiness in life just from enough fun, enough self-indulgence. It also takes honor and integrity and pride and above all a sense of your own strength and a sense of your own ability to survive not getting your way. And you're not going to get it Unlike the way we saw it about 30 years ago, you're not going to get it by sacrificing your loved ones for it. Let's look at the second clip, Lovers and Other Strangers. Where the hell do you think you're going? Joan and I talked it out, and believe me, it's better this way. Better? Better. For who? For your mother? For your father? I'll tell you what's better for, for you. Always you. Now, what do you know what's better for you? You don't know what's better. Only you know, huh? Did you listen to me when I told you not to marry her in the first place? Listen to your father. Don't you understand? Joan and I are just not happy together. You hear that, Beatrice? They're not happy together. I heard, Frank. Well, who's happy? Who's happy? Well, do you see me running around dancing in the streets? Do you see your father running around dancing in the streets? What, are you better than me? You think your mother and I are happy? You mean you and Mom aren't happy? No. Then why did you stay together? We're content. We're content. These kids today, all they're looking for is happiness. Don't look for happiness, Richie. It'll only make you miserable. <laughs> Isn't that what Andrew Weil was telling us this morning? Now, we're living in a world that's in trouble. We're living in a world in which families are in trouble, and we've been part of the problem. Uh, we've been encouraging people to do what makes them feel self-actualized in the long, in the short run. We've tried to protect them from imperfect relationships. We've urged people to leave home, to break off with their parents, to break off with their husbands and their wives and even with their children and to settle for nothing less than perfect relationships that are never going to interfere with their self-pitying narcissism. <laughs> we've really made a mess by not respecting by not respecting people's ability to change and to adapt. You know, the whole time, I've got to care about how people feel. I've got to know how people feel. But I can't leave them at the mercy of how they feel. There was a time back 30 years ago when I was a nicer, more likable therapist, when I didn't know how to be much more than accepting and neutral and somehow make people feel that their feelings were important. Massage always feels better than surgery. <laughs> but I do better therapy. I know I do better therapy now because I'm treating people as if their feelings are important but that their lives are more important. I'm treating them more as if, as if their lives can make a difference. And I do it, really, I'm less and less likely to ask people how they feel and to ask people what other people are doing. Increasingly, what I'm doing is asking people what they are doing and how other people are feeling. It's a crucial difference. 